The original Crash Bandicoot games are something you sit down to have a relaxing platforming experience on in the background. 100%ing them is difficult but not overly frustrating. You won't end up breaking your controller, uninstalling the game, or shouting a racial epithet at a rodent wearing shoes. <laughs> Those games have been something that since I was 6 years old I would come back to play for an hour or two once every few weeks or so because they were such a familiar, relaxing and satisfying kind of fun. Crash Bandicoot 4 says f you to that ideology. It takes every aspect of Crash Bandicoot and asks the question, yes, but what if we made this 500% more frustrating? Uh, are you... Are you fucking kidding me? It takes the idea of a casual stroll through the platforming park with Mr. Bandicoot and bombards that park with mortar fire, insane homeless people and dog owners that will not pick up their dog's feces. It was a game whose intense, punishing design put me off so much I rage quit it for four months after release, and then when I did finish it, was so horrified at the conditions to 100% it, I never touched it again. Until one month ago. What I thought would be simply a game that's far too punishing for its own good, turns out to have underneath it a fantastic game that makes no attempt to tell the player how to play it properly. When you do make that discovery for yourself, there is much fun to be had. But to earn that fun, a sacrifice of intense patience and at least 15 years of your life will have to be paid to a very angry bandicoot first. Okay, I missed one, right? Yep, missed one. 227 out of 228. Isn't that lovely? That's a bunch of bullshit. It's a bunch of bullshit. Crash Bandicoot 4's main intensity comes from what I call mean-spirited game design. That is, not only is the game difficult, but difficult specifically at the expense of the player. Yes, box counts and level times are huge now, but more importantly, the very construction of many levels feel like they're made to spite the very person playing it. Like, you're not supposed to have fun. And if you aren't, good. That's the point, you dork. 100%ing a level is no longer a fairly doable goal, if you're simply paying attention and are relatively patient. No, it is now a gauntlet of winding back and forth bonus levels that you will die constantly on. Boxes that you will be able to soft lock your way out of until you kill yourself. In the game, not real life. No, maybe that'd help as well. And hidden gems, so hidden, they might as well have came on another disc. How the fuck would anybody know that? <laughs> what? The great shame of this is that Crash 4 is easily the most enjoyable Crash Bandicoot game to exist in. Mr. Bandicrunt is so smooth compared to his twit year old self, I can only speculate on what fantastic Wumpa Fuel diet and furry yoga routine he's been doing since we last saw him. A slightly floaty jump makes precision platforming that little bit easier, a highlighted shadow shows exactly where Crash will land, and is essential for a game that hates you as much as this one does. Hell. Jordan, stop screaming. Add in smooth slide spins that feel like butter to execute well. When you get Crash moving, it feels like the pinnacle of Bandicoot-based movement mechanics. It passes the old Miyamoto test of put Crash in an empty room, and it's fun to just run around in. And when you do just get to run and slide, jump and spin, bop and whoa, yeah! yourself through the place without every inch of level. Did you like my Crash Bandicoot impression, by the way? Whoa! without every inch of the level trying to stop you, then it's a fantastic time. But it's also a collect-a-thon. In a Crash Bandicoot game, you are there to get all of the things. Yes, you could not do the bonus stage, but what are you, some sort of freak? It's like a pick and mix. Yes, you could go to a pick and mix and get a small sampling of three items, but that'd make you an absolute weirdo. At a pick and mix, you get the largest bag you can, smash as much shit as you can into it, eat from it until you feel sick, then keep the rest for later until it becomes a dusty pile of glucose fossilised in the corner of your bedroom. That's what you do in a crash game. You see a box, you smash it with your stupid bandicrunt face. Because that is what video game boxes exist for, to be destroyed violently. 
And in the old games, this was a fine marriage of mechanics. You could run and jump and spin and have that joyous momentum all the while smashing them gosh darn boxes all the live long day. And I double checked as well what you think I just vomit my thoughts onto a LibreOffice document. And yeah, that's right. Libra, LibreOffice, Microsoft. I ain't spending money on fucking Microsoft Office. No, not even, I can't even buy it. You got to, did you know this? You have to subscribe to get Microsoft Word. To get a word processor, you have to subscribe. Bill Gates, no wonder you got cancer. Oh wait, that's the other guy. Anyway, the point is, I do my research. You can see in Crash Bandicoot 1, look at this flow. I'm running, jumping, spinning, maybe stop for a second to avoid an obstacle, but then you keep on moving and it feels great. But in Crash 4, if you want to collect all the things like you're supposed to, you have to throw that flow completely out the window. Back in 2020, when Crash 4 came out, I was a naive young man who hoped for the best and found out the hard way that Crash doesn't love me anymore. And, uh, and that's me, Phil's the level have to do it all again because they put a TNT in my way. Isn't that fair? Isn't that nice? Completing a six minute long level and then looking at the box count and excuse me, I missed one fucking box. That's a bunch of bullshit. It's a bunch of bullshit. I have to do that all over again because of one box. Are you kidding me? How many fucking times is that going to happen? That's where old Jordan died. Where the flow died. Now to play Crash like intended, you need to scrape Crash's face all over the scenery like he's dragged his arsehole in the carpet and you're giving him in trouble for it. And all the while you're thinking, if I was going to hide one box, where would I do it to piss off the player as much as possible? And that's generally good advice. If you're struggling to find a hidden gem or just one last box, if you think to yourself, wait, if I really hated the player, where would I hide this thing? then you will have remarkably increased your chances in finding that thing. You know, I take a lot of pride in my writing, but I don't think there's any combination of nouns, adjectives, and demonetizable verbs I could come up with could truly describe the unending fury Crash Bandicoot 4 filled me with. So let's take a look at some examples instead. So this is, uh, this is Run It By You, uh, one of the worst levels in the game. Now you see I'm looking over the right, because I know there's a hidden gem there, because the internet told me. And I'm, I'm turning the camera, I'm sliding. You need to jump over and kill yourself to even see it. Ridiculous. Uh, this is some pirate level that I've played about 500 million times. You can look through every part of the level, look for secret areas, you know. Uh, try to have fun, but no, it's not. It's, um, it's just hidden behind something you can't see. It's right there. It's right there. Would you ever find that? I wouldn't. Thanks, Google, for helping me out in that one. Oh, eh, perhaps the worst one in the game. Do you see a hidden gem in front of you? No, I don't. But it's right there. Yeah, that's right. That's right. It's inside a platform you have to kill yourself to get. Just fuck you, whoever put that there. Eh, oh, that. Oh, this is horrific. This is the worst one in the game. So you can see I'm on top of this box. I'm moving the camera. There's clearly nothing up there. Clearly, I'm, I'm, I'm double jumping. I'm spin jumping. All that. There is a gem there. But you need to bounce on this box around the, the crate above it. It, it, it. This is the only way to do it, by the way. And then if you if you if you somehow do it, there's a gem up there. It, there are no words. Once again, we're back at Run It By You, worst level in the game. So every person who plays this will have six boxes missing at the end. This is the very start of level. You know where these six boxes are? They're right in front of us. Right in front of us. They are hidden. There's two. They are hidden behind steps. There's four. At the start of levels that you can't see behind. Move the camera as much as you want, you'll never see them. There's six. Worst hidden boxes in the game. Worst level in the game. Oh, add on to that. Bonus levels. Shut the fuck up. Bonus levels used to be fun excuses to smash and bash boxes in an unconventional 2D layout. Quick mid-level palette cleansers. Not anymore. Now they are a ludicrous difficulty spike where you have to, for the vast majority of the time, Lap the entire length of the round back and forth, activating or breaking boxes in a specific order, otherwise you'll soft lock yourself. Oh, did you break a box that stopped you from making progress? A box that you had no idea would have been a bad idea to break? In a game where the entire purpose of our protagonist is to break boxes? <laughs> you fucking loser. You should have just magically known that the game designer was going to fuck you over for playing the game the way it's supposed to be played. 
So not only are you now encouraged to scrape your nose around every inch of scenery instead of enjoying the flow of the level, now you have to doubt whether you should even break boxes in front of you. In a Crash Bandicoot game. It's the exact opposite of what you're there to do. So why am I here? Why did I make a video about a game from three years ago that frustrated me so hard I quit playing? Because two weeks ago, I saw a speedrunner. A speedrunner of Crash Bandicoot 4, and my god, they made this piece of shit look easy. They were the person who showed me this game could be fun to play. If you knew how to play it. As it turns out, all the mechanics needed to have fun in Crash Bandicoot 4 are present, but they're never demonstrated to you. If you try to play Crash 4 like its predecessors, your muscle memory will not like it. While the floatier jumping is better for platforming accuracy, in such large levels it makes you feel slow and takes most of the joy out of the bounce crates. Your double jump now removes almost all of your horizontal momentum, which is a major reason why the game can feel like a slog sometimes. You get in a good flow, but then you have to double jump and you lose all your speed. You can do a quick slide spin, but the timing is so precise and you can mess it up in so many different ways that you won't understand that you might very well just give up using it entirely. Depending on your timing, you might fly over gaps or under hazards, which feels great, but then sometimes it won't work and you'll die. And you don't know what you did wrong. Did I hold slide for too long? Or not long enough? Did I spin at the wrong time? Did I offend Crash and he chose to kill himself simply to spite me? The advanced techniques of Crash 4 feel so awkward and finicky that after a while you abandon the idea of them entirely. Then at the end of the game you unlock the triple spin ability. There's no video of how to do it, the game just says, hey, you can spin three times in a row to go super fast now. But just like the slide spin, it's a strangely precise technique for a Crash Bandicoot game. You don't just mash the spin button in the true spirit of the Bandicoot and go fast, you have to time it out very precisely. So imagine you're trying to speedrun a level and put all those techniques together. You're slide spinning with perfect timing so you can fly over gaps without falling, spin jumping out of it, all the while rhythmically pressing spin in groups of three, all without double jumping because that removes all your horizontal momentum and dying because there are no checkpoints and I'm talking about a Crash Bandicoot game, what the fuck is going on? Okay Jordan, well that sounds shit, but you know that all sounds like really hardcore techniques for only the most dedicated of speedrunner and you know what, I agree. But unfortunately, we're both wrong. There were so many points throughout this game when I first started playing where I looked at the obstacle in front of me and had no clue how to overcome it until I realised you could just do things the game simply doesn't tell you. It'll tell you how to jump and spin and slide, but it'll never say, oh by the way you can just slide like three box lengths in front of you onto thin air and then high jump out of it. Or, you know you're trying to get past this bullshit little trap we've set for you where you'll get bounced into nitro crates? You know you can just spin on a bounce crate and you won't bounce? Things that I looked up how to do on YouTube and said out loud, wait a minute, you just do that? What the fuck? And I know now that people who have played the hell out of these games already know these things. But I fucking didn't. And nobody fucking told me. All of those advanced movement techniques, slide spins and triple spins, they sound and feel like they're only for the most dedicated speedrunners, but no. The time trials in this game are brutal, as the Welsh would say, and you need to get a platinum relic in each one of them to 100% the game. If you just want to get the full ending, you need to not just know how to perform, or how to perform well, but perform these techniques perfectly. All throughout some levels that are already ridiculously difficult, are really, really long and, most importantly, have no checkpoints. Oh, and I forgot to mention, the slide button is also the slam button, so you're goddamn right I've accidentally slammed myself into infinity more than a few times. Fuck my- fuck this dude, fuck this game, fuck it. What a fucking stupid game. And you know what's great too? All the little unskippable little interactions and auto-scrollers in most levels, when you die while speedrunning, you get to enjoy grinding on the same rail for 45 seconds yet again, doing nothing, or watching Crash's general bewilderment at whatever event just occurred in front of him. At the very least, this can give you a second to stick another pin in your Bandicoot voodoo doll you've made. Oh, and I forgot to mention triple spinning repeatedly, aka doing that like you will be doing for minutes on end through speedrunning levels, really hurts your hand. As soon as I started speedrunning, within five minutes I had noticeable pain in my hand. Isn't, isn't that great? In the age of accessibility, let's create a game mechanic that actively damages the human playing it. What's even more peculiar 
is if you look at the time trials for non-crash characters, they're perfectly reasonable. Oh yeah, there are other characters. As if the punishment this game inflicts upon you was not severe enough. Not only can you play as 90s platforming pop duo Crash and Coco Bandicoot, you also get to, well, have to, play as Tana, the, for lack of a better term, Bimbo Bandicoot from Crash Bandicoot 1. She's gotten a full Gen Z makeover now, has Twitch streamer hair, and says shit like this. Aww, Hawaii. I don't like her. She has a grapple and can jump off walls. She's okay. Moving on. There's also Dingo Dial, everybody's favourite absolutely normal looking Australian person. He's quite fun as he's so big you just chew through boxes with a tap of the spin button. And he has a hover move which has a satisfying little noise. But then there is last and oh my god so definitely least, Neo Cortex. Everybody's favourite yellow flat headed Simpsons looking motherfucker is back and he sucks. He sucks so much that when I got to his first mandatory level back in 2020, I quit the game. In the middle of the pandemic, with nothing else to do, I chose my mental health over this arsehole with alphabet spaghetti on his forehead and I do not regret it for a second. No auto aim, no double jump to make platforming less punishing, he sucks. No auto aim Jordan, yes, he has a gun in a 3D platforming game in which you cannot control where you aim. Do you see the problem? Speedrunning a neocortex level in Crash Bandicoot 4 is akin to live, unanesthetized circumcision. Alright, here's the bit that fucked me over last time. Hit the- No! Hit the guy! Hit the guy! Hit the guy! Hit the fucking guy! Honey, I need you to see this. I need you to see this. I need you to see this. Hit the guy! Hit the guy! Hit him! Fucking moron! Hit him! Hit him! Hit him! Hit him! I hate this game. Like, fuck, you see that fucking bullshit? Are you still doing that? No, I'm gonna do this. Like, I'm good right now. I just hate this fucking game. But did you actually see that? Yeah, I did see that. Like, what the fuck are you supposed to do? Oh. Toy for Bob? Fuck the lot of you. You're c -ts. Anyway, let's try again. Yeah, I get, I get mad at video games sometimes, okay? Gaming Jordan does not represent video Jordan, okay? That was the case. Channel would have been shut down a long time ago. And me and my girlfriend are good, by the way. You think I'm bad? Oh, so when she loses a boss in Zelda, you would not believe the words. That Is that Hitler in the room? No. It's my girlfriend losing at Ganon again. She's, that's a joke. She's not Hitler. She's not. She doesn't say. I, she just calls Ganon a bitch. That's it. I'm kidding, honey. Love you. She doesn't watch the videos anyway. She, say, she says she will, but she doesn't give a fuck about Crash Bandicoot. For, it doesn't matter. Her, her dad does, though. Hey, Bill. How you doing? Originally, I came into the video with the opinion that I hated the additional characters. That every time the game ripped me away from the Stockholm Syndrome-esque loop of our furry orange friend, I was denied a better gameplay experience because of it. And when you're abused repeatedly by one Mr Nigel Cortex, that's a red haze that's difficult to see out of. I did it! <laughs> but in reality, apart from this prick, they're all fine. In fact, compared to the pulse-pounding stress of time trials with Crash, they can be a relaxing palate cleanser. The reason I thought I hated all of them is that the majority of playtime with these characters all involve playing through a level you have already completed, more than likely at least twice already. Let me explain. So when you complete a regular level, you unlock the inverted variant afterwards. Inverted levels are physically flipped left to right from their originals and have a visual gimmick based on the world you're currently in. Dino World is watercolour, Pirate World is black and white, Future World is underwater, etc etc. These levels all count towards 100% completion. If you hated a level, and completing it, then you're also going to hate doing it all over again. Mercifully, you don't need to do a second time trial for each level, although we'll get back to those in a second. Certain levels also have events where something happens that causes Crash to stop and look around with a general air of what the fuck, and then you move on. These levels unlock a spin-off level, where you play the alternate character that caused that event. But after you get to that event, you continue on as Crash again, with slightly different box layouts. So you get it now. Most of the time, playing as any of these three involves, in part at least, playing a level you've already seen for a third time. And while two out of the three characters provide a different enough pace to keep things fresh, the association of going through some very sluggish or downright terrible levels is enough to sour the taste in your mouth completely. 
The inverted levels are something that has taken me the better part of 40 hours to decide whether I enjoy or not. In theory, they are a fresh spin, haha, <laughs> I said spin, funny, on already explored content, a cheap and friendly way of expanding the game's length. In reality though, inverted levels are, for the most part, Crash Bandicoot 4, but with a visual disability. They don't offer a meaningful gameplay twist or even rearrange boxes or enemy layouts. They just make things more difficult to see. Or in the case of the water levels, more difficult to see and incredibly slow to play. I see the appeal. The Last World arguably does it best where things are retroified. An added score meter is a beautiful touch. In the mood change, the alternate music and sound effects gives the levels. It's very cute. Doesn't make them any less of a massive pain in my ass to play, but they're just... They're cute. Yeah. After a lot of thinking and complaining about the game's punishing design, I realised that inverted levels should be the places where the game peaks in difficulty, mellow down many of the original levels that ask way too much of the player and make them the inverted variants. These should be the challenge you come back to after you complete the game, not an equally difficult challenge that feels like retracing your steps but with a funny filter. Just change the box layout a bit, move some enemies, put in a new mass segment, and that's different enough for it to feel like an enjoyable addition and not frustrating padding. Then you can dial back the difficulty on the rest of the game so the average player doesn't break every bone in their hands trying to, get this, have fun. We're gonna go bam, gonna slide, gonna go like that, gonna jump. And yet, with all of that said, I'm addicted to this video game. The game's job of teaching you how to play and enjoy it is an absolute failure. But when you somehow figure it out yourself, mental health be damned, it becomes the most satisfying platformer I've ever played. And we did it. We did the thing. No nice gaming. When you master those techniques of triple spinning, slide spin jumps, and mass toggling at the correct times, you truly reach the peaks of Bandicoot Whoa! enlightenment that I saw in a Crash game. But for the average person who simply wanted to enjoy the next Crash Bandicoot game, I feel they will not be ready for this pilgrimage. I hate this game so much. I do have to concede though, as satisfying as those mechanics are, there is no denying that many levels in Crash Bandicoot 4 simply suck. Whether that be from ludicrous box layouts, obscene difficulty, frustrating alternate characters, slow on-rail sections, the simple fact that you've played it so many times, or a combination of all of the above. There are countless levels I look at in the map and think, hate this one, hate this one, hope whoever made this is having a terrible day, hate this one, this one's alright. And that's not the vibe a cartoony platformer where you play as an obscure rodent in a pirate world should be. I should be excited as all hell for each new excuse for jumping, spinning, and box breaking through the world. But Toys for Bob took that dream. And they said Jordan. That was 1997 Crash Bandicoot. Y2K, 9-11, and the 2008 financial crisis changed that man. That Bandicoot is dead, and he's never coming back. And also, the next game he's going to be in is an Overwatch ripoff PvP team-based multiplayer game because we know you just wanted a remake of Crash Bash and we wanted to piss you off. Fuck you and have a nice day. Crash Bandicoot 4 It's About Time gets four soggy wampa fruit and a resting heart rate of 120 out of 10. But there you go, ladies and gentlemen, that is the unbridled fury that is Crash Bandicoot 4. You know, I didn't really realise how much just absolute anger and rage would go into this video. I, I not until I've been editing that I'm like, wow, I was, I was like really pissed off. Um, because you write it with fury in your heart, then you forget about it and then you come back and you're like, oh yeah, I, I do, I fucking hate this guy. But anyway, did you feel the same? Do you hate Crash Bandicoot? Uh, let me know in the comments below. I don't really care what you say in the comments. Just like, I've got like fucking 600 subscribers. Say whatever you want in the comments. I don't care as long as, long as people see the video. Don't worry, there's more to come. So stick around, get subscribed and you'll be able to check out all these videos that take way too long um, to make compared to the viewership that they actually receive. And of course, we have to sign off with a random inspirational quote I found on Google. And re remember, remember, be so good, they can't ignore you. 
That was by Steve Martin. Well, Steve Martin, you never try to make a fucking YouTube channel where you make comedic and intellectual analysis of video games, you old fucking white man. Anyway, thanks for watching. I'll see you next time. Thank you.